Alright, so here we are with the 4.8 assignment on coordinate proofs. So, uh, first question here is, what is the relationship between coordinate geometry, coordinate plane, and a coordinate proof? Well, they're all on a grid, um, so <laughs> that's kind of an idea here. Um, coordinate geometry um, means that you're basically doing geometry, but putting your figures on a coordinate plane. So, coordinate geometry is figures on a coordinate plane. And then a coordinate proof ends up using uh, kind of these graphing techniques. To prove. So, for instance, a midpoint formula, or just sorry, which you wouldn't have um, in any other scenario where it's just a blank screen with a shape on top. So it's actually kind of cool because you can find all of the links even though maybe the proof doesn't give you it. You can use your math to find it. So first one here, we're trying to position each figure and remember that we want to be as close to the origin as possible. So in number two we're looking for a rectangle with a length of four units and a width of one unit. So kind of depending on what you want to do here, um, a width of one unit and then a length of four is probably going to mean I have this tiny little image here uh, where this is the width and then this is the length. Uh, the next one is a right triangle with leg lengths of one unit and three units and remember that since it's a right triangle we do want to position it at that um, center at that origin and have our sides kind of along the axes because then we can use that given 90 degrees. So. Uh, this one is also going to be uh, very small, but um, we've got a leg length of one and then a side length of three. And so I think I'm actually going to do it this way this time, where we have one for the one side there and then three for the other side. And then just indicate that that's a 90 degrees there. All right, uh, the next one wants you to write a proof. Whoops, trying to erase that using coordinate geometry, and so we're going to probably use distances, and well, you can see in the wording, midpoint. Um, so we are given the right triangle, okay, so we do know that it does have this right angle here. We also have the coordinates of P, which is 0, 6, Q, which is 8, 0, and R, which is 0, 0. Uh, A happens to be the midpoint, so A um, is going to make this the same length there, and then B is the midpoint, so these are going to then be the same length. <clears throat> and we need to prove that AB is half of PQ. AB is half of PQ. Okay, so this length here is supposedly half of this length. Okay. So, in order to do that, we are going to then need um, each of the lengths there. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get the coordinates of B. And since B is the midpoint of RQ, if we plug in our X values for R and our Y value for R and add them to our X value for Q and our Y value for Q, we get the coordinates of B, which are going to be 8 divided by 2, so 4, and then 0. All right, uh, the other midpoint that we need, because otherwise we can't find the distance between them, is for A, <clears throat> and A takes the X's and Y's from P, so 0 and 6, and averages them with the coordinates of R, which are 0, 0. And so this one has a coordinate of 0 plus 0 divided by 2, which is 0, and 6 plus 0 divided by 2, which is going to be 3. So now we know the coordinates of A and B, and also the coordinates of P and Q, and so we need to use the distance formula to find them. So we're going to use the distance formula to find the length of PQ. And so in our distance formula, where we subtract our Y values, so for instance, 6 minus 0 squared, and then to that we uh, subtract our Y values, 0 minus 8 squared, the distance of PQ is going to be 6 squared, which is 36, plus 64 from neg uh, negative 8 squared. 
And so we end up with the square root of 100, um, or 10. So PQ is 10. And then we also need to find the distance of our second one, which is AB. So AB, the distance, is going to come from our y's subtracted, so 0 minus 3. And then our x is subtracted, so 4 minus 0. And we are squaring, so it doesn't necessarily matter if either of these are um, negative or positive. Uh, it's going to be 9 plus 16, which is 25, so that means that AB is 5. And so in our proof, um, and if we were doing a two-column proof, uh, that's the idea. But in this one, I'm just going to kind of show um, this is working. So in our proof, we are trying to say that AB is a half of PQ. And so if we do some substitution of PQ as 10 and AB as 5, uh, we do end up with a true statement. All right, so uh, the next one here is going to position each figure on the coordinate plane again. Uh, we have a right triangle with leg lengths of M and N, and so this is where uh, it doesn't actually matter how many dots we have, but we do need to mention, um, for instance, that it is a right triangle at the origin, so always. And then I'm just going to kind of um, indicate that this distance is going to be M, we don't know what it is, and so don't use the coordinates necessarily, or the boxes. Uh, and then this one is going to be at n. So our coordinate for this dot up here is going to be 0, n, and then the coordinate for the other one is going to be uh, m, 0. Again, ignoring the actual squares. Alright, and then the next one wants to be a rectangle, and so we're going to have a rectangle, and of course it doesn't necessarily matter where we start or stop, except that it needs to be at the origin. So if we do that, um, oh, and then I didn't give this coordinate from the previous one. Okay. So this next one here, we want a length of A, so I'm going to indicate that this is A over here, meaning the coordinate is A, 0. Over here, we're going over none but up B for our width. Of course, 0, 0 is our origin. And then over here at this piece, we've gone over A and up B. Um, again, without counting squares, because that's not what they're looking for. All right, this next one is, again, another proof. So um, we know that R is a right angle and A is the midpoint of PR, and B is the midpoint of QR. And so um, if we're going to find, as we did in the previous problem, uh, we are going to need to use our midpoint. So this one is going to be a little bit more involved, because notice that there are no coordinates, and that's because you are going to use variables. So um, if we kind of set up how we want this to look, Notice that we're doing midpoint, and so one of the pieces in our notes was identifying the fact that if you're doing a midpoint, you're going to want to make the further distance um, like 2 of something. So for instance, we could call this 2x, and so therefore halfway between would be x. Uh, and then if we do the other side, we could maybe call this one uh, 2y, and then halfway in between we'd call it y. So you do want to use an even number so that you can kind of make a halfway point that is less confusing than a fraction. Uh, so they do tell us that this is a right angle, so that's good. Um, and then I guess I should put these letters. So A is the midpoint of PR. So we'll call that P, and this R, and this one A. Uh, <clears throat> oh, we actually have to call this one R because it says R is the right angle. Okay. So this one is P, and then this one's Q. And then between Q and R is B. All right. So we've kind of got the setup, and so we're actually going to use this same um, idea as the previous problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the coordinates of A and B. And so the coordinate of A is going to come from our um, 
x's added together and divided by 2, and our y's added together and divided by 2. So in order to get a, um, maybe it'll help if I write each of these coordinates. Um, p is going to be 2x0, uh, and then I guess I don't really need to go through and find the midpoint because I can kind of identify that it would be halfway between, so I'm going to skip that part. Because logically half of 2 would be 1. So uh, this next one is x0 over at r, we're at 0, 0. q is 0, 2, y, and b is 0, y. So now I have to do the distance, which is actually, um, uh, it's going to feel a lot more confusing than it really is. So uh, the distance of, let's see, we'll do qp is going to be the square root of our x's and y's subtracted. So the y value of p is 0 minus the y value of q, which is 2y. And then to that we'll add the y value of 2x minus the other y value, which is 0, and square that. Taking a look at each of our pieces, uh, we now have the square root of 0 minus 2y, so negative 2y squared plus 2x minus 0, so 2x squared. Uh, no matter if it's negative or not, this is going to end up being 4y squared plus 4x squared in a square root. <clears throat> now some of you are going to say, oh, well then 4s become 2 and squares become square roots. But I'm going to tell you right now that, for instance, let's say that we have uh, 4 plus 16. If you square root that and use this policy, you're going to say that this is equal to 2 plus 8. And I'm sorry, but the square root of 20 is actually a decimal that is not 10. And so we can't use that idea where you can just apply the square root to each of them. Like square root of 4 plus square root of 16. It doesn't, it doesn't break up into those pieces. So square root of 20 is actually 4.4721, which is certainly not 10. Alright, so, uh, going back here, that means that this is the distance, which is, again, really ugly, but hey, we'll talk about it being double the other one. And then we need the distance of, what is the other one, BA. So the distance of BA is going to take your uh, Y values, so let's see what that was, 0 minus Y, squaring that, and then 0 minus, oh, sorry, x minus 0 squared. Simplifying, that becomes negative y squared, which is just y squared, uh, plus x squared. And so the square root of y squared plus x squared is our um, solution there. So there is something that we can do to simplify this phrase. And so um, we're going to go on to the next page to kind of see how that works. So uh, remembering back to our radicals review that we had. Oh, wait, this is not algebra. Uh, this is geometry. So either way, um, I'll kind of go over how this is double. So, first thing I can algebraically do is realize that in this set and this set, there are both a 4 in them. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to undistribute that 4. So I'm going to take that 4, what we call out front, and then be left with a y squared plus an x squared. And so then you're going to ask me that question of all questions, which is, well, where did the other 4 go? Well, the other 4 didn't go anywhere. It's still there, especially if we understand distribution, which means I'd multiply that in there twice and end up with two fours outside of the x's and y's. So, if you're there with me on that, then that means that we actually have the square root of 4, and then y squared plus x squared, and in multiplication with square roots, you can actually take the square root of individual pieces, not with addition, okay, but with multiplication. So instead, we actually have 4 square roots, and then y squared plus x squared, square rooted. And of course the square root of 4 is 2, 
And so we literally just have said that 2 y squared plus x squared is actually equal to what we've just said here. So 2 square roots of y squared plus x squared. And so hopefully you can see that that means it's double, right? Two of the same thing that would have been the answer for below uh, works. So just to kind of show our proof, uh, we were trying to say that, what is the phrase, AB equals a half of PQ. And since AB is the square root of y squared plus x squared. And PQ was 2 y squared plus x squared. The 2's end up canceling with the half. And so we realize that y squared plus x squared equals y squared plus x squared which is our true statement, and so we're all good. So, um, interestingly enough, we used to actually have an entire chapter of just coordinate proofs, and it ended up being very uh, algebra-heavy. So, anyway. All right, so the next one here, we're going to find the missing coordinates for each figure. And so you can see we've got some little squares there. And hopefully, based on our previous... Um, work here with the variables, we kind of understand that to get to this point here, we're going to go over n and up n. So our coordinate is n, n. Uh, this other one here, we have 0, 0, and in order to go up here, we've gone over p and up q. But to get to this piece here, you've only gone over p and then up nothing. All right, so hopefully that was kind of an introduction. Um, again, number seven is a little bit uh, more of that application piece. Um, so if you at least understood what we were supposed to do in number four, um, that is kind of uh, where I'm hoping you're at.